What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the number one thrall that you should be getting. And honestly, this is probably the only thrall you're ever going to need, especially with the build that I'm gonna show you in this video. Now, you do not have to run this build in this video for these thralls to still be very viable. However, I am going to maximize the damage that these thralls can do, and we're going to get into it right now. Just to give you an idea of how monstrous this build is, not only you, but your thrall are doing massive amounts of damage. So much damage that it took us a total of 13 seconds to defeat the King Scorpion. So the thrall that we're looking for is in a couple of places in the Exiled Lands. It is the Cannibal Brute. It can be found here in the summoning place, which is on the line of G and H in five. And what you want to do is run in the front section there, run up the stairs, hook your way around to the right and run up here and you're going to find a cannibal brute spawn. Additionally, if we come down here to Skulker's End in D4, we can also find a cannibal brute standing right in front of the entrance to the dregs. Now that you know where to find them, let's talk about why you want them. First and foremost, they have the highest damage modifier in the game right now, with a melee damage modifier of 3.12 and an agility damage modifier, also known as the ranged damage modifier of 2.88. Now, the important thing about that stat modifier is that that is the basis for the rest of the math that happens for thrall damage. So the higher that number is, the more effect your strength damage bonus when you level is going to have. Now, when your thrall levels, you will gain a strength damage bonus, and you can see that down here where it's going to have a percentage. So you really want to focus on leveling this thrall for strength. You can see this one has a 95% growth chance in strength. You always want to look at these percentages when you get new thralls so that you know where they're going to level well. For each point gained in the vitality attribute, this thrall is going to gain 70.81 hit points. So basically, every time this goes up, you're going to gain about 71 hit points. Now, they only start off with 429 hit points, so it's very important that you protect them early on and put them in really good gear so that they don't die before they have the chance to get enough hit points to withstand attacks. Now, this is a cannibal brute that I took out leveling for a little while, and I'll show you what I did here in a bit in the video, but this cannibal brute didn't even have a good growth chance for strength with only 79%. But you can see just with eight points in strength, they have a 21% damage bonus. And they're only level 11, so we still have just about half of the leveling process to go through. Now, the nice thing about the Cannibal Brute is they're a fast leveler, which means you're going to spend a lot less time leveling your Cannibal Brute army than you would other Tier 4 Thralls in the Exiled Lands. And honestly, I would say right now the Cannibal Brute is the new Beastmaster Tamos. Let's go over the gear on the Thrall. So first of all, the armor is the Sumerian Steel. This is because it gets a bonus to its health. It is a heavy armor, so it's currently 1,656 total armor. The weapon that she has is the Momentum. This is by far the best Thrall weapon in the Mace category right now. It has 90 health damage and 39% armor pen once you apply the Master Weapon fitting to it. It's named after one of my Avenger level supporters right here on YouTube, so thank you very much, Mondo, for your legendary support. And I used the Thaumaturgy Bench to apply the look to this armor. I want to thank everybody for subscribing to the channel. It's growing really fast. If you haven't made the decision to subscribe to the channel, join your fellow exiles in clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you get notified when I upload another video. Now that I have a quick outfit change, I'm going to show you the build that I'm running to maximize this Thrall's damage, and it is absolutely insane damage that this Thrall is doing. Before I show you that, go ahead and whack that like button. Let's see if we can get this video to 1500 likes. Jumping right into it, we're using the Abyssal Armor. This is the best in-class armor, in my opinion, if you're going to corrupt your character. 
and we are going to corrupt our attributes. And this is the attribute system the way I have it set up. I have 10 points in strength with all of those corrupted. I have 20 points in vitality with 19 of those corrupted. I only did 19 corrupted because I still wanted the glutton for punishment perk from this attribute. We're then going into authority all the way with all 20 points and we're corrupting 19 of those again. I wanted to keep well trained as the last perk in authority. That's going to give our follower a big boost to all of their stats and I'll show you that here in just a moment. Lastly, I put the last 10 points into grit for the additional stamina and the faster stamina regeneration. Now you're not gonna get a lot of attacks out of this. I can do one, two, and three light attacks before my stamina is fully drained. For heavy attacks, you're only going to be able to pull off two before your stamina is fully drained. Now that's if you're using the Abyssal Maul like I am, I feel like that is best in slot if you're going to be corrupted. And then we also have the Abyssal Bow. The great thing about this is we don't have to carry any ammo with us. So we have unlimited ammo and the health damage and armor penetration for this bow are both quite nice. Additionally, the armor and the weapons have almost no weight. They are all 0 .10 weight. And we're cranking out 1,120 total armor and we're in light armor. So if we have this thrall follow us, you can see it automatically starts healing because its vitality points went up when I had it follow. What happens with this build is it gets an additional 20 to each one of its stats, bringing its max strength bonus up to 38% and bringing its vitality up to 2,954. Now you can see I've got some buffs going on with this thrall as well. I'm feeding them pork, salted pork, and then giving them an elixir. You can choose whether you want to give them an elixir for health or an elixir for damage. For feeding while I'm leveling, I'm giving them the grilled steak so that they can get the most points in vitality possible because the grilled steak is going to give you that additional growth chance of 14% that you see right here. If you wanted them to grow more in strength, you could feed them gruel and you would have that growth chance showing here. So the way that I went about leveling this thrall is I actually took them home. I took them back to Skulker's End and we cleared out that camp. We then went through the Dreg's Dungeon and I had the Thrall stop at the entrance so that I could kill the first room by myself, giving the Thrall the ability to level without being in combat. By the time I was finished with the first room, the Thrall had reached level 6. Now you could stop here and wait for those things to respawn, do that first room again. It's really good experience. Or, like me, you could continue through the dungeon. Once I finished the dungeon, the thrall was at level 8. I then figured, what the heck, let's just go in the unnamed city. So we did. I killed some small baby dragons, a handful of skeletons, and reached level 10. I said, why not, let's go face off against the Red Mother. And I gotta be honest, I don't know how fast she was able to kill the Red Mother, but it was super quick. And I'll put a timer on the screen so you guys can see how quickly she melted the Red Mother. We then went on and killed the Commander of the Flame, and she actually killed it in the amount of time that it took me to kill two regular skeletons. As you can see, the damage that she's putting out is astronomical. She kills things so fast, it's not even funny. You do have to be careful with this build. Any damage that you take, your Thrall gets half of that damage. So do be careful with that. But I think this is a really solid way for you to use the Cannibal Brute to absolutely shred anything in the Exiled Lands. Now, if you want to see this build in action, I will be live streaming it on October 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can swing by and check that out. I'll also have some prizes to give away during the live stream. Don't forget to whack the like button on your way out and let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite thrall. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen, click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.